He is the, one of the stars of the Belko Experiment, a harrowing movie coming to a theater near you on Friday, March 17th, and he's already on your television set now in season six as the president of the United States, Fitzgerald Grant on Scandal. Good to see you, Tony Goldwyn. Good to see you, Rich, yeah. How many people see you and, and think you are, in fact, the president of the United States? How often does that happen? <laughs> well, they call me Mr. President. Do they really? Whether they actually believe it, you, you know, mm -hmm. you just never know, but I... I wouldn't be surprised, <laughs> given the way some people's minds work. But uh, yeah, it's, it never uh, fails to be surreal when you walk down the street and people go, "Mr. President." And now, do you turn around and go, "Wait a minute, who's is there really somebody here that's the president of the Only United States?" Only in the White House, I did that. <laughs> I was at the White House, and people were going, "The president's here." So when, I started looking around. Seriously, you know, when you, you I when was you... doing a tour of the White House a few years ago, uh -huh. and. Um, uh, some people, staffers, were saying the president is here, and yes. I thought it was President Obama. And it was, and in fact, it was me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, did you take a seat behind the Oval Office desk at that no, point? No, I wasn't. I didn't want to get arrested. That's probably so, a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you I know, I did. I did go. I was in the Oval Office, and I took a s selfie, mm -hmm. and was told that was not allowed. But I huh. luckily posted it on Twitter before. Uh, it's not allowed. You're not allowed to take you're a not selfie. Allowed to take photographs. Yeah. Huh. So, I didn't know. Although. That. We've seen we've some. Seen we've seen. We've seen. I know. So, yeah. We've seen some recent uh, <laughs> yeah. photographs online about maybe, that sort of yeah. thing. So anyway. Now, uh, just before we we get on to uh, Belko and uh, and some other uh, items here, um, how is your relationship? Because a lot of sports fans know Namdi Asamoa, who is the husband yeah. of Kerry Washington, great Namdi Asamoa. with with whom you have um, some scenes that uh, might be very un Asamoa friendly. I was a little nervous the first time we met. Yeah. <laughs> You know, he's a shutdown corner football player, right? He's honestly the. I mean, I'm sure you know him. He's like the sweetest, brilliant, most. He's a very brilliant guy yes. and a very sweet, gentle mm -hmm. soul. You know, and um, uh, he's just a, a great guy. Um, and I'm, you know, those two got it right finding each other. I'm really happy. for Yes, him. but not so. You and Namdi, you're you're good. You're yeah, cool. we're good. Oh, we're awesome. good. He's a sweetheart. He really is a good yeah, dude, you is. know. And I know I think he, he he had some acting chops himself. He he was in a Oh, he's really good. Yeah, I know. He was and in his movie he just had I was a little jealous of Namdi cuz this year at the Sundance Film Festival, he had two films at Sundance. I did not know that. He's just gotten into the movie business in the past couple of years. One he starred in, and that movie called Crown Heights won the Audience Award at Sundance, which is hard to do. No the other film he produced and sold for a Big chunk of money at Sundance. Now that doesn't happen to anybody. So I was like, Namdi, you do realize? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> like, is there anything you can't do? These things don't usually happen. Yeah. So this is really an interview about Namdi's career. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. No. But, uh, it's <laughs> no, but good. he's awesome. It, I love him. Tony Goldwyn here uh, in the Belko experiment here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Now you're from the Los Angeles area. Yeah, I grew up here. So did mm -hmm. you grow up going to Rams games? Did you do that? I was as a kid. I was a Rams fan. Yeah. So I'm really psyched to see them back. I was a Rams in USC. Uh, my dad. I think I might have told you this when okay. we when we saw each other in New York. The first football game I ever went to was a USC game because uh, my dad was a mad USC fan, and he said, you're going to see the greatest football player that's ever lived. And it was O.J. Simpson in his senior year at USC. Where he was... And I remember it vividly. I was the little kid, and um, he was... Was that the game like he, he ran for 19 million yards against it was something UCLA like that. I mean, or something I remember like him that? just going like this up and down the field, yeah. Right. So, and now here are so, the Rams back in, in yeah, Southern California, back in, in the, uh, in the yeah, Coliseum. Hopefully they'll... Do something. I yeah, know. Man. And they might actually be doing something as we speak during right. the free agency period right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, okay, let's talk about the Belko experiment here. Because this is uh, this is uh, an interesting concept that folks out there who are listening or viewing this show right now, going to work, where one day you go to work and then all of a sudden, essentially like Lord of the Flies breaks right. out. Exactly. Right. Where exactly. where the, the windows shut down. And go ahead. Tell yeah, well, this this, this is um, centered about a business that's an American business centered in South American Colombia. Mm -hmm. You don't know quite what we do. It's something that might be connected to the U.S. government. Anyway, one fairly normal morning, all of a sudden, the building gets locked down by some security system that's built into this building. Yeah. And a voice comes over the loudspeaker saying... You need. You have 30 minutes in which to eliminate two people in this building, or we will kill four people. And we think it's a joke. We think it's a right. is it terrorist? Is it some thing? Uh, and uh, we don't. You know, I'm the boss, and I'm trying to calm everybody down. And all of a sudden, four people die. You're the COO of Belco. I'm the COO of Belco. I mm -hmm. run the business there, and uh, 
um, and four people suddenly die in a gruesome way, and we realize this is real. And they say, okay, now we're going to kill, I forget the name, 30 people if you don't kill 60. 60, whatever it is. You kill 30, yeah. we'll kill 60. You're right, yeah. And um, uh, we have two hours to, do, to make a decision, and people start turning against each other, and we break into factions, and it becomes like Lord of the Flies. Wait, it's like, what would you do? Hey, what would you do? If you're in that you know, situation. like, okay, we're all decent people. What do you do? Mm -hmm. um, and I take one position, being a former <laughs> special forces warrior. Yes. And one of my subordinates in the company takes the exact opposite position, being a, you know, uh, someone who who couldn't even entertain taking a human life. Well, so. there is there is a great shot of uh, Rich Eisen show friend John C. McGinley with a meat cleaver in his hand. Well, then there's John C. McGinley, who's one of the <laughs> madmen in our business, and John John plays like one of my kind of lieutenants. Yes. Who and we were in the military together, and he kind of. <laughs> I'm trying to be a good, reasonable boss, and yes. McGinley kind of goes off the rails so he's, pretty quickly. So he's sort of the devil on the shoulder, in kinda, a way. Kind of, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. He's nuts. It's fun, but it's James Gunn who who wrote and, and, and directed uh, the Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy, Galaxy yeah. and the upcoming Guardians 2. Uh, James wrote and produced this, and um, it has his kind of twisted... <laughs> it's funny, but it gets... It's very dark, and... Um, and uh, it's just, it, it's really a, uh, an intense, fun ride, this movie. So, I, I mean, because I asked you this off the air, I might as well ask it again, because you and McGinley have not worked together before. This is the first time that you guys worked together, and you guys were in some pretty iconic films for, you know, a while ago. I guess yeah. when, he, when he was doing Platoon, you were you were in Ghost, I think, if you were no, no, right, Platoon was, was early. When he was doing Platoon, I was still a... It's an unemployed actor, right? But um, shortly Maybe after Wall that, Street I did or something Ghost. Like yeah, that. exactly. And then, and uh, John and I almost worked together in an Oliver Stone movie that I ended up having to drop out of because of scheduling. And we've known each other for years. And he's he's a really one of our great actors. And um, you know, I know you said you had him on. And he's, yeah, he's, he's nuts. A he's a big Giant dude. fan. Like I'm sure he's excited about the Brandon Marshall signing. Yeah, right. How often do you get any uh, people coming up to you talking about Ghost? And, and every, that every it's, it's been sort of supplanted by Scandal, but okay, pretty much. Every day, it's either Scandal or Ghost. No kidding. Yeah, or Tarzan. That was the voice of Tarzan in the Disney movie, so that seems well, to be kids a dig that sort of, did, yeah. did you know at the time what Ghost was no, going? No, you never know. Man, I was so grateful for to have a job mm -hmm. and to have be one of the leads in a in an actual movie. Right. Um, I, I was just so, you know, knocking wood every day. Uh, so, no, you, have, you never know. I felt like if they do this right, this movie could really be commercial. And when I saw it mm -hmm. and saw how good it was, I thought... If this isn't a hit, someone didn't do their job. Um, but you never, you know. Well, it was like, a hit. It was like same with Scandal. I had no idea Scandal was going to work the way it has. And six years later, here we are. And here you are. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, Tony. I appreciate yeah, you coming sure. here. And the Belco experiment, um, Friday, March 17th, sit there in the theater. Just like I'm sitting here at the Rich Eisen show, I'm looking at the <laughs> two Chris's and Del Tufo over there, <laughs> thinking about what would happen if, I mean, we do have curtain, you know, screens that come down. If this was some sort of situation, what would we do with each other? Right. Well, it's, it people fan. are in for a ride. This movie is really, really fun in, a, in an insane way. Well, it looks yeah. fun. It looks fun, and it is fun. And check it out uh, in theaters near you on March 17th. Thanks for coming in, Tony. Thanks, You're welcome Rich. here anytime. I love it. Come Thanks. on back. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.